Hi guys, welcome back. So we're into the meaty part of the series and you're gonna um, be in with a surprise of just how much work is involved with this car. I was gonna do a two part episode within this episode. So the test spot and what it is and obviously the correction element of the whole car. But today I'm gonna to put it all together. And for that reason, it's just so simple to explain what a test spot is. I'm gonna show you how to perform a test spot on a car like this. And then we'll move into the correction. So. What is a test spot? Um, as the name dictates, a test spot is something where you obviously test the product, the pad combinations. And the reason you do this is because you cannot tell me now, you look at this car and say, it is gonna require this pad with this polish. Nobody can ever say that. Now you can make assumptions. So obviously Mercedes paint, anything German is usually on the harder side. So you will say, yes, I will need to probably microfiber pad this but you don't know this car definitely has had pain in the past so some parts of the car may be softer or even harder than the original paint so that is literally the test spot because you could in essence do a microfiber pad with a heavier could compound and then follow it up with the refining uh, product but you could be working on a Japanese car where a soft pad and a soft polish could have done the job for you. So you could have saved yourself 20 hours of your life. If you're a business, that's 20 hours of unpaid work. You've pretty much done that. So in this case, again, this is my car. Um, Time-wise, I don't care. 10 hours, 100 hours it takes me. It's, this is, you know, this is a project for the long term for us. So I'm going to be using a combination of three machines. So machine one is the biggest machine. So the Rupes LHR 15. And that is basically with the, with the biggest pad size and that will cover mainly the big areas. I'm then gonna bounce back onto a three inch pad size for the Rupes LHR 75. So again, three inch, you can start getting into the tighter areas and then I'm gonna be using, I'm not sure whether it's the Flex or, or the Hybrid Nano, probably the Flex I'll use on this. Um, it just got a bit more oomph for me and it's interchangeable a lot quicker than the hybrid. So I'll probably use that for the super tight areas where the LHR 75 will start to bog down. Cause what I have found out, again, I have been working on this car off camera as well. So I've tested all the panels. Now, to the best of my knowledge, um, I will obviously do this on camera again, but this paint um, is knackered <laughs> it's it's dead it's literally the worst i've had um a few people ask me probably what's the pain like this is literally the worst car i've worked on uh, it's, it's not even um a comparable thing for me and the worst car is my car so it's actually a pleasure to be doing this but i'm starting to get a bit fed up with it but to the best of my knowledge i think the bonnet and the wings are actually decent pain depth um, however, you start coming into here, obviously I'm going to show you all this. It is low. I mean, some parts are even 30, 25. Um, and this is messed up as, as bad as it really is. So you need to start using some of the more advanced knowledge, how to cut paint safely without affecting the UV inhibitors within the clear or without blowing through the panel but then also trying to remove as much defects as you can. Some parts will never be perfect without a respray, but that's because of the paint depth. Unfortunately, that's the card that I'm currently dealt with. So, so we're gonna go and grab the biggest machine now, and we're gonna bring you in closer to have a look at the paint. Now, if you all want to have a laugh, now obviously you can see certain outlines. I've been wiping all the different products, but look at this here you're looking towards there, this first strobe light, and look, it's number one, you've got a film. Then, if you look, you've got swirl, scratches. Now, I've re-wiped this with a moist towel because there was a bit of dusting involved. Now, just look at the defects. It's very bad. So, the microfiber pad, first of all, is going to be pulling the white from the paint. And then on top of that, you need to start etching into, as you can see, the swirls and scratches. Now, obviously, I've took, I've took everything off. So I've took these off. I've took the door, the door handles off here. But I'm going to show you the level of damage that we're playing with. There's me on camera, by the way. 
Um, now, again, this might be a bad representation because the car was wiped with a wet towel, but what you're seeing is immense haze, but you're not seeing any swirls and scratches. Now, again, this is what I'm working towards. As you can, in fact, let, let's grab it onto this strobe light here. Swirling is gone, but the hazing, which I've caused, which is not a problem, is what's going to get removed onto the next episode, which is going to be the refining process. But for the purposes of this video, just have a look how bad this truly is. It's really, really bad. You add some forced induction lights and you can see it's covered in swirls. So I've got one of the newest products on the market. Um, this is from CarPro and it is Ultra Cut. Now, as you know, I've raved about their clear cut, but then again, there's the line, as you can see, and it's actually gone past the lines. So the reason they've tried to do this is they've tried to make it easier to wipe, less haze, across paint obviously black will be the best to actually show you and even more cutting ability so just for reference i have just read the driver door you're looking 45 microns and here you look at 97 again so that's all well, in fact it's over double 102 so there's a big spread across the car again 102 98 so you're let's average it to about 100 so now the 15 millimeter um, machine has been pre-primed the pads primed we've put a bit more liquid on and now we're going to do like i said a test point and see exactly how much defects we can take out So I'm getting a bit of heat now, which is standard with compounding. Now watch how easy this removes. This is a compound. I'm putting barely any pressure on and look how easy, bosh. So that is one of the advantages of this product. And as you can see, there's actually no dust. All right, have a look. So it's removed. So you can still see there's a little bit of polished residue, which is fine, but it's actually removed all the heavy dirt and, sorry, uh, swirls, not dirt, defects. Now, to complete the test spot, obviously it's very hazy. Now, you could see there's a very clear outline. I don't know if the camera's picking this up, but from around here, you could see where I stopped and obviously at the bottom of here as well you can see where the pads actually stop rotating. Now the, per the best thing for this to do now is we're gonna go and get our finishing combination out of things gonna work. We're gonna quickly whiz over this and then you're gonna see what the potential finish result can look like. So we're just gonna take the LHR 75 now, as you can see this is the three inch pad. This will be interesting. Just oh look, this is Sonax perfect finish. Just look how that wipes. It's an absolute dream. This will change your life. I don't know how well you can see that, but you go from here, look at the light. Boom. So like you've just seen, um, it is very, it's a very simple two-step. Now across the panels. It's not as easy, again, I've been working on certain other panels around the car. Um, some panels have got just as much film over the top, which I still to the day don't know what this is. Um, 
but also what they've got is deeper scratches. So what I found is, especially on the on the big machine, because I can't get into the edges, I'm going I'm having to do two, maybe three hits sometimes to try and really pinpoint the scratches. Um, because if I'm going this far, if the paint is there for me or the clear coat is there in terms of the real depth, then I'm going to try and chase everything that I can as much as I can. So now I'm going to just start in a chronological order, most likely here, and then we'll just try and whip around the car as fast as we can. So my thoughts so far on this ultra cut is, you guys know I'm a Sonax Cut Max, Sonax Perfect Finish fanboy. The perfect finish is not going anywhere, but I think this can genuinely rival um, Sonos Cut Max. So this car will tell me, because um, it's so deep, the scratches and the, and the defects, eventually over this whole car, even if I use half a bottle, I will know whether this is going to replace my most favorite lineup. So, the bonnet is one of the most visible places on the car. Um, the only thing I'm worried about is when some parts of the car are um, paint-wise, it's just not there. Whether it's had a battery spray from factory, whether it's been polished to death, we'll clear this. I don't know who's been polishing this car because it's, it's the worst I've seen. But what I'm worried about is if there is a deeper defect, Obviously, we all know who I am and exactly like the, the OCD that I have with paint. Um, and sometimes it worries me that I may not be able to actually go deep enough. The paint's not going to allow me to go deep enough because I'll actually blow through the paint faster than I will get to the scratch. So um, this car might be one of these cars where I say it's 90% perfect um, due to no fault of my own, but it is what it is. We'll see what happens as we move around it. Everybody has said to me, black is the worst. I'm like, bring it. I've accepted the challenge and let's see what we can do with it. Oh, I'm making some serious heat. Um, So yeah, I've been looking, listen to this, um, obviously we all know that I, thought I was Googling these numbers um, and I think it's a 2035, there's going to be no petrol cars. Now, again, like this is quite a rare car, you know, I mean, there's not that many of them on the road, this is classed as a supercar, so I was thinking, do I keep this? Obviously I'm going to see how I... I get on with the car um, and ooh, is, is before I continue, like what I said over there, um, you've got a scratch here, got a scratch there and it looks like I haven't even touched here, um, obviously the edge work I'm going to hit with the, with the flex including here but I'm going to have to re-blow the pads out and hit it again and that's because you saw the white film, obviously microfiber pads, you exfoliate in the paint. So the, the residue, the white film that you see is actually clogging up the fibers and the polish or the compound. And you're actually not letting the product do what it's meant to do. So again, it looks much better. So I've probably done what, 75% there. But again, before you want to move on to an area, especially the refining stages, I see so many people whip through the car so I can compound this car in two hours, which is impossible. But, and then they go, um, they go into the refining stages and they start chasing their tails or they're trying to make the refining polish do what it's not supposed to do. Um, and trying to overwork it to try and get rid of a scratch. Whereas I'm taking more time on the step one, where when the refinement stage comes, as you've seen, whoosh, and it's gone. Um, all the haze, I don't care. I'm looking through the haze right now here and I can see there's still deep scratches. So if you do this step properly, you can then refine the car, this car, probably two hours, um, if you're lucky. But um, as I was saying, I look like a pro detailer like this. Um, so as I was saying, this car, you know, is in the category of like, it's a supercar. 
and I thought maybe how see how I'll get on, I might keep it. Um, and I might just, if I do get on with it two, three, four years down the line, I might take it to like the best body shop in the country. Whoever, whoever will have that title when that happens. And I might just go for like, so I might drop the engine, um, put it on air or something. I don't know about the air part. Um, I look like a goofball, but like do like a weird color. I was, I love my Panther black. If anybody knew me back in the day, um, or my RS3, not my, I don't think many people on the YouTube channel did, but um, yeah, I had a, a Panther black RS3, brand new. It was one of the nicest paint jobs. Like we really, really like perfected the paint work and it just looked wet 24 seven, even dirty. But I was thinking like, I saw a picture before, like a metallic or pearl candy apple red. Oh. Um, so depending on how I get on with the car and whether I like it over the long term, um, because obviously I will be bolting on new stuff. I've already looked at one of them GTR wings. It's not the Nissan GTR, a Mercedes GTR. Um, just all different stuff. Engine base is going to get changed around and stuff. So um, if I'm finished with it and I still like it, I might go for a weird paint job and make a huge series about how cars get painted. Um, so you never know. Keep your eyes peeled. I like to mark out sometimes on the paint. Big air scratch there. And there. So I like to mark it. I'll put a dollop on here. And that way I don't have to repolish an area that I don't have to. Let's see. But are you watching? Look how easy this wipes off. I'm not promoting them or anything. I just. In fact, I was just talking to a customer on the phone and he was saying, how do you, you know, he mentioned Minzerna, CarPro, Sonax. And he said, well, what's your best? And I said, well, when you get to the last 10%, when all the products are like premium, um, you're looking for like the smaller factors like wipe off time, dust time. As you can see, there's still no dust from this product. Oh, dear me. And this is the problem that I was telling you about. I've seen this already on other, other parts of the car that, again, it's the same, it's like this, two little scratches across, well, not little, they're massive. What I might do for control purposes, I might go and get the, the LHR 75 and start to really hone down on it. So again, LHR 75, this is probably my favorite machine, easily. If you could, I would love to do a video like this. Can you polish the entire car with this? You can, it'll take you a little bit of time. But I don't even need to see the light. I've got a strobe right above me. And this is where I'm gonna work a smaller area now. What I like about this compound it's not overly thick, so you can actually see through, and I've just seen that that scratch, it's still there. But, have I removed a little one going left to right? It's all right. So we moved the one going here. It's still... So as you can see now, this is the third it so I've got to be careful now um, you know applying too much heat to one area can, is not always best so and this is where I, I keep telling you if a scratch is you know I'm going to hit this again if it's if we're starting to diminish it fair enough but if it looks like it's not going anywhere and I'm taking clear down and down it's just for one little tiny scratch I can live with it. Um, it's just life, you know, I can't really help it. Everything else around it is hazy as hell, but flawless. Because that's what I'm really looking at, the floors under the haze. So third time lucky. As you can see, I'm skipping over the scratch. I'm not having a focused area. Um, because you don't want to put too much heat with a microfiber pad into one spot because you'll just go right through it so quick. 
Oh, let's have a look. Hallelujah. Pray to God. There's a teeny weeny, but literally I'm starting to like degrade it. So it's good. So I'm going to whip over it anyway, over this area. So I'll jump back over this uh, side. But again, so three times on an area this big, multiply that over the whole car. And as you can see, it's, it's going to take a long time because I've been tinkering with this for a little bit now. I know the working points or the better working points, let's say, of the compound. Um, and I find that when it finishes down, very nice-ish for a compound. So if you're watching and you're saying, oh, he's done more than four passes, there's a reason, you know. I know the, there's, I know the depth behind the paint and I'm trying to manipulate the compound to how I want to play it. See? In this case, first time round, so literally I've jumped, what, six inches and the paint is in a whole different level of state. And I'm always, if I know there's a bit of a defect left, this is more like a little tutorial too. If I know there's a defect left here, but I'm polishing here, I'll always skip back a little bit. And usually that extra little bit of a bite just gets it knocked out. Advantage in my head of a hard painted car like this is if it's super hard to remove it in essence just take it with a pinch of salt this um it's slightly harder to damage it as well in terms of swirls and scratches so the finish is a little bit more durable not always but sometimes so i'm hoping this is the case you know harder to remove but harder to make <laughs> the defects are that bad you don't actually need to see any spotlights only when you're checking really. <laughs> Just a bonus, more time saved. Boom. See on the edges I've overworked the polish a bit, which is not a problem. This is starting to concave a little bit i'm going to take my little flex now tidy it up all the edges it's a cool little machine this isn't it oh actually with this this is a one inch um back and plate but i've put a two inch pad on this so this is to actually it's a weird combination but i've been doing it for years actually so it actually slows down slows down the pad speed ever so slightly. You may ask why, it's just a little bit more control. And you can actually get, it's, it's a strange one because the, the one inch pads seem to bog down a little bit sometimes in the, like, in the, in the valleys of the paint. So with this, you just can have a bit more flex with it. So I've done one tenth of the bonnet and it's real time. I think this is an hour, hour and a half of work. Really silly sometimes, the pain hardness of course. Look at that angle, nice and high for y'all. So hopefully you're gonna see me work the center section. All right, so what's the day today? It's, um, pa, 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 it's like the 7th or something, is it? 7th, 8th of April. Um, as it stands, we haven't had the shop open all year. We've done no click and collect. This car hasn't been driven since, um, obviously I put it in here. So this whole year, this car hasn't been driven. Um, so it's a weird one. I really can't wait for um, me to be able to get this car. I'm hopefully gonna now hammer this. Um, we open as of, Obviously, as the, as the video airs, so it'll be next Friday is the first day and I'm just going to be driving so much. I can't wait. I've actually uh, missed driving this thing. Now, it's a good thing I'm tall because this is one hell of a bonnet. So I'm going to try and work bigger passes on this one.
You know this camera, <laughs> this new uh, tripod I've got, it is actually all, well, in fact, if the camera was aiming straight, it's actually taller than me. I think it's a seven foot tripod, so go big or go home, like they say. But hopefully that's a much better angle for you as well. You can, you can see a few more things that I'm doing. Now I've definitely overworked this polish. Harder on the wipe, as you can tell. Hey, I've had way too much coffee. <laughs> so, oh, hey, not bad. Still again. It's the little, it's the little tick marks that I see everywhere, which is starting to slightly annoy me because it's correcting most of it out so there's a mark so as i was saying friday 16th of april we're open um, our times have changed so again it has to be um please if you are traveling from far check our opening times because um we're only open Friday and Saturday now because we've got so much work to do. Um, we've got to obviously pour, label. Um, our sales have like literally so good now that we, um, we've, we've got staff just like pack 24-7 um, pretty much. Um, as much as we can, this is why sometimes if you guys order past the cutoff, sometimes again, if the DPT driver hasn't been, um, we try and just as, up until the driver comes, we just pack from the day we get in or from the moment we get in to the moment DPD driver comes in, we're just literally packing, just trying to get as many orders as we can out the door. Um, so sometimes he is late by half an hour. So obviously we've got, what is it? Four people, three people full time. Um, packing has a lot of parcels that could be done in 30 minutes. So um, yeah, but it's not always guaranteed because sometimes he turns up early um, so it like evens itself out, but Friday 16th, can't wait, you guys, we are, that's why I'm not facing the camera that way, because we've got the shopping bits, we're kind of preparing, um, new layout, new products, we were going to have a Kranzo on display, obviously if you want to see a Kranzo you can see ours, but the Kranzlers, actually that's the proper term, um, worldwide shortage, and because the sales are that good, we sold out twice, got them in sold them again it's just ridiculous so there's gonna be a bit of a gap at the minute but yeah i can't wait to see you all um obviously the car might be in here it might be not who knows um it might be in here for you all to see but it, as i said it's mainly a display car so it might be in here most of the time if it's like if i'm not driving it and it's clean so i just hide it in here sometimes sometimes you know it's elsewhere um but yeah, you can all come have a look at the shiny paint that I'm trying to get for you guys. <sighs> but yeah, everything's moving fast this year. It's April already, I can't believe it. Standby for Black Friday 2021. Woo! Last year was crazy. Um, so standby for this year. I think this year is going to be our biggest one yet by a big kind of point. Um, in fact, we might be taking on another property again. Again, it's it's... The way you've got to think, it's a, a cut from our uh, bottom line. Again, you know, th these units yearly aren't cheap. You're talking tens and tens of thousands. Um, but we've got something coming, which if it comes, obviously I can't say anything now because I hate making promises I can't keep. But if it does come, it's going to be huge for us. And we've got no space again. So we're three units in because we've had to drop a few. So we've kind of consolidated everything under uh, some uh, some bigger units. Way too much coffee today. So we might have to take a few others on as well, just to try and patch the gaps, because everything's everywhere. And yeah, we've got so many things coming. You guys are going to be happy. But with that, actually, um, with that, I'm going to... Love you and I'm gonna leave you. Um, I'm, gonna call, I'm gonna call it for the day, about 6 p.m. now. Um, 
lovely that there's nobody in the business park it's just nice and serene around here but i'm gonna leave it um you've seen me polishing enough paint now you've seen that the car is extremely hard to polish i can't actually i don't know if even the video shows you of how hard the paint is but it is granite sometimes i'm hitting it three times i mean look i'm using the hardest compound there is known to man with the hardest um microfiber pads and it's it's hard so i'm gonna leave it you've seen it now i've done uh, probably what half a bonnet i'm gonna work around the rest of the car and i will catch you on the next one where we're going to be talking about refining and you're going to see the pretty bits obviously i'm going to break a sweat to do the whole car the right way and then we can after that we're, we're going to kick back um in essence we're going to kick back and enjoy it because uh, the finishing process is a quick uh, whip over just work the product in and we're going to start bringing back the gloss because at the minute the car is like even from this angle it's very hazy and very dull and then we're going to um, put some serious protection on as well um, and in fact let me know as well in the comments whether you do want me to film, I don't know, interior detail. Obviously, I'm going to show you the engine bay because you saw what I put in the engine bay. And I haven't touched it. It's just been closed all this time. And but let me know in the comments if you want me to do an interior detail again or wet vacuum video. I'm sure the carpets need a bit of extraction. I don't know. Um, but yeah, let me know. I hope you enjoy this um, over the weekend. This is a longer than usual video. And um, just know when you're watching i'm probably upside down somewhere polishing a small part of the car um so guys hope as always stay safe hope you've um enjoy your weekend and i will see you in the next one thanks a lot guys